Welcome to the second of three video tutorials for the layouts for the closest tilings of the rosettes. The first one was the 8, this one will be the 10, the last one will be the 12. And as before, we'll pick this up on the website and the text and figures description to take these from the layout to the rosettes. So they all start the same. Uh, we'll, all, we'll start this one with a two-fold divided circle, line across the paper, and then we will put a circle on it. And as before, I'm going to be marking a lot of my points because I can't get close to my drawing because of the lighting. In general, it's a good idea, but uh, I will edit most of them out. All of the compass centers in this will be marked. And this is going to be an unusual 20-fold division. I'm going to do this strictly with dividers, and it's going to be a little different from the divisions you've seen before. I'm using a beam compass here, um, best tool for the job, and actually this circle is as large as you can fit on your paper. I'm on uh, double letter, the equivalent of A3 here, so this is, I think, about a 130-something millimeter, 135 millimeter radius circle. And this technical pen at that radius doesn't work very well on a bow compass anyway. So there's our two-fold divided circle. And the circle creates two new points. And we're also going to create an additional two points. This circle is, again, an arbitrary radius, a little bit less or a little bit more than half. We don't want it to be half. And you'll see why in just a minute. And this will be used to create the perpendicular bisector of the circle. So four points marked, and we can go back to our compass work. And this is a surprisingly simple layout for the tenfold. This is not a five-fold division directly. This is a direct tenfold division. And this is a surprisingly simple layout. We'll simply mark these two, the uh, six-fold divisions. But this is actually serving as a bisector of the radius in this case. And then we'll mark the perpendicular of the center of the circle, one above, one below. And we're doing it this way just to keep everything inside the circle. This is almost, but not quite, all the compass work for this layout. There's one more compass arc to be done. And we'll fill in our perpendicular bisector of the circle. I marked these all of the compass points on all of the points for the radii and the divisions of the circle will be marked with a marking needle, a protracting pin. I've edited all of that out. And then now we're going to bisect the radius. This is a vesica bisection. We just didn't draw the whole thing. And we're going to bisect that radius. We don't need the line. The only thing we need is to mark the bisector on the baseline of the circle. I'm marking these on the circle for two reasons, so that I can check and make sure that I've got nice, accurate lines. And the other is so that I don't mistake those for tenfold divisions of the circle later, which is not hard to do, unfortunately. Our last point marked for our compass work. And then this is the same as the pentagon construction. What we're doing here is if you consider the radius of this circle two, we are constructing a one, two, square root of five triangle. So this leg that we're now constructing is the square root of five in a circle of radius two. So this needs to be, this is going to 
in a single step set aside for our tenfold division. So this needs to be done fairly accurately. And this is a little awkward. So you'll bear with me for a second while I get my radius set up accurately. If you mark that point with a pin or a uh, pencil point, you can feel for it with the point of your pencil compass, and you can't feel for it with an inking compass without making a mess. So it's a little slower. So I strike a little arc there to be sure that I was on, and then I move down and I mark that on the baseline of the circle, and I am done with the compass work. If you go back to your triangle that we had over on the right hand side, which is a 1, 2 square root of 5. This is actually the square root of 5 minus 1. Doesn't really matter, but that's what it is. And that is the side of a decagon. I'm going to complete this with dividers. You can do this with the compass, but the dividers are the correct tool for this. That's why they're called dividers. Um, these are hairspring dividers, so I'm setting that with a small thumb wheel on the leg of the dividers. And then you take that and you check from either your horizontal or your vertical. Check that you get five sides exactly fitting in. And the joy of the dividers, the reason they're so accurate, one of the reasons they're so accurate is they never leave the paper. There you go. Five sides fit top to bottom. So I'm going to mark these so that I can feel them accurately. And then what you don't see off camera is I checked the right side and the top and the bottom to make sure that everything was exactly, that the circle was exactly fourfold divided and that my decagon side was accurate. And then I go through and I mark very lightly by pushing down on the leg of the dividers. I make a very small mark. Notice I'm pushing down holding the leg. I'm not pushing down from the top because I don't want to disturb the setting. And the pencil mark isn't actually doing anything. The pencil mark is there so I can find the divider mark later. And I go around and this should drop right into my point where I'd marked that. It dropped right in. With a little practice, this is actually not very difficult to make extremely accurate. Um, this is how machinists set up divisions when they're doing tool room work. Obviously, it's not how you do production work. So this will get a little boring. We have to go around from top to bottom. We're marking 10. And then after we finish our 10-fold divisions, we want 20-fold divisions and 2N divisions for a 10-fold rosette. So we're going to come back and do exactly the same divisions starting on the horizontal baseline, and that will give me two staggered decagons, 20 divisions. So through editing magic, we saved ourselves a little time. We have our 20 divisions. And the next thing we're going to do is to mark the pattern space, which is the limits of the four-fold rosette pattern, the five-center pattern. And this is set up exactly as for the 16-fold division for the eight-fold rosette. We're going two to the second division up and the second division down. And we're drawing our upper and lower limits and then we're simply finishing off the pattern space, in this case, a rectangle. And this is determined by how many rosettes you can place around the center without overlap. And uh, I believe that's detailed in the text description on the website. And uh, we went through this in the class. In this case, you will have a hexagonal unit cell, but it's not a regular hexagon. So we'll get to that. That's easier to describe when we're drawing it. 
So we need to draw in our 20 divisions of the center, and as before, we need to divide all four corners. And this is simply done by connecting the divider marks, which I can feel with the pencil point, from division to division, checking that they go through the center to make sure that I don't have any problems developing. Some of the divider points are a little bit light, and I'll have trouble picking them up with the pencil point. So you'll see me go through, and in the divider marks, the divisions of the circle, which will not be used for a compass center, I can just take the pencil and uh, mark them solidly. In the cases where they're used for compass centers, the four that are marked here, at the pattern corners. I don't want to make those any larger than they absolutely have to be. So I'm going to have to mark some of these with my pencil, as you'll see as we go through. and 20 divisions marked. So there's no reason to extend these outside the pattern space. So we keep things neat by keeping these inside the pattern space. The next thing we do need to do is to divide the corners. And this is done exactly as it was done in the case of the eight. The corner divisions share the divisions of the circle and we use every second division. So this one is an interradius. This is the interradius where it intersects the interradius of the center, that is the radius which does not have a rosette petal on it. These are defining the sides of, in this case, the decagon around the rosette, the limiting polygon of the rosette. That's not a tile, so you can't tile the plane with the decagon, but um, we discussed that decagon in a couple of cases because it has some interesting ramifications. We don't ever draw them in our, our course because they're really not particularly useful in drawing the structure. They're useful in understanding the structure. There's quite a bit of work to do dividing the corners. 
a large number of divisions. So through the magic of editing, we're going to skip that part and all of our corner divisions are magically going to appear. I'm going to put this last one in because if you look at where these two divisions, bottom and top intersect, that's the original definition of the side of the decagon. That they should cross that defining point that you constructed earlier. So one corner completely divided. And four corners completely divided. And at this point, um, as I say, this tiles is a hexagon. The hexagon runs from this point to the baseline through the two intersecting interradii. So the interradius from the corner intersects the interradius from the center. This line that we're drawing right there is the side of a decagon. And then we continue that out to the side of the pattern space and we get a and we're going to get when we fill all of these in a hexagonal irregular hexagonal tile. And again the you find out if things are going well in your layout if all of these intersections line up. And all four of those intersections should lie exactly on that line. And those are critical intersections because those are those interradii intersections in addition to defining the shared polygon are the intersection on which we will place our proportioning circle for the rosette. So there we have our unit cell, our pattern space, and our 52 radii. And now we're going to place our proportioning circle. This is at the intersection of those two interradii, which define the shared side. And the radius is set to that radius, the center of the shared side. And as for the eightfold, this should be tangent to the three sides of the triangle in which it sits. We only need one of those. That peripheral circle determines the radius of the next circle. The circle determines the star polygon at the center of the rosette. And, you know, layouts aren't perfect. So we'll check the outside radius tangent to the circle, make sure we're as good as we can get for tangent to the circle from both centers because of course there's a little play of the line width. And then we strike our partial circles. Four around the outside, one in the center. And I forgot to mention earlier, the reason I'm so slow on striking circles is this is a very fine technical pen and they don't like fast feed. They need to be drawn slowly so they feed evenly and give a good line quality. Fill in our center circle, and then we can set for the third defining circle of the rosette. The third circle is going to fit inside the tile, the hexagon, and the radius is set center to an edge of the tile. And again, these technical pens are a little picky, so you set the approximate radius and then you bring the pen upright so it's feeding nicely. And then we adjust our radius. We'll check to the outside and make sure the radius is good and then strike our five limit circles. And this completes our layout for the rosette. I'll go to the web page and look through the text description with the figures for each of the steps in creating the rosette pattern. 
and then you can join us for the next course for more fun. Last circle, tangent to four of the six sides of the tiling polygon. So there you go. You're now off to create your rosette, and we'll see you in the next course, and hope you have fun.